Okay, good. So if I am if I did everything right and there are no problem, again I get a right button and I can go further. So let's go further. Okay, we work here. So you see the first part is green, the second part it's also green. Now, if I click to the next, he will be asking me a very important question, yeah? which is, choose your library. Basically, we are providing, because this tool is connected with the construction details database, we are providing two types of possibility. You can choose to work with the certified passive house construction details, which means that once you are inside these construction details, you cannot change them because they were certified as such. So you can you need to use them as they are. You do not have a lot of flexibility in terms of of uh, choosing, except the fact that you can choose one or the other detail, or you can choose independent details, which are basically details which were designed also for energy efficient house for passive houses but which are uh, which allows you to have uh, uh, a little bit of flexibility in terms of simulating the thickness of the insulation that you are putting inside that uh, that one so just for the purpose of demonstrating i have selected independent details so that will be will give me uh, a little bit of flexibility and once i have selected this i have uh, uh, i am uh, i am uh, uh, pointed towards this uh, uh, this section where you have the possibility of selecting different junction to open different uh, different uh, uh, libraries. So uh, I have here my OPEC elements, which I have defined previously. So I have defined the uh, roof flat, I have defined the wall against air, and I have defined a slab against air. I have, I don't have anything else to do than to go and click on the roof flat. And if I select this one, then I see myself here which is a selection of uh, 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 construction details and which uh, allows me to play a little bit with the construction details that I would like to do. So I can scroll to the left or I can scroll to the right and I have different type of construction. And here you can see there are two options for changing the characteristics of this detail. You can see it even better here. There is an option to play with whatever the detail as was defined has, so a thickness of 18, but you also have the possibility of selecting different thicknesses. By selecting different thicknesses for this or for the other one, basically you are playing around with the U values or with the thermal performance of the wall. The thermal performance it is specified here, you will see it all the time, in this case is 0 0.11. So, I have selected my construction detail. I have played around with the thickness to obtain the U value that I think it's uh, good. And then I have this part where it says select, con select construction. You can do two things. Either you can select this construction for all flat roof area. So if you defined only one flat roof area, you will have only one. But if you define three or five or 10 flat roof area, and you know that in your construction, these roof, flat roof area are different, you can point out for each of the flat roofs a different U value. The moment that you are selecting one of these options, you will see automatically here that it's specified that you have selected some kind of construction detail for roof. It is pointed out and then you just 
click on back to library back to library will leave you to here okay i'm selecting my walls i get to the same selection i play around with the different with the different uh, um, with the different uh, details i'm selecting it i go back go to uh, ground slab i selected it i go back and basically i have finished with the selection of my opac elements that it's all also from opac elements point of view what it stays or what it remains is okay i have some windows and i have some doors which i have to um to simulate so for the same principle i am selecting uh, windows or doors and i will find myself in one of these two sections the first section is the section where i can choose my windows and i have about six or seven of them you can select very poor windows in terms of uh, performance of <coughs> In terms of performance of uh, thermal or you can select some better windows you will see here also in the characteristics of the window some other uh, important indicators such as the g value which will tell you how much heat gains you will have once you have selected once you find something that you like you can do the same thing select it for one type of window or for all windows this is up to you to decide and last but not least I have one door or maybe several I don't know this were also uh, you have some some uh, options of selecting I think there are three you can select a better win uh, door or less uh, performant door from thermal point of view and once I am here basically I have ended up with my uh, uh, with my uh, construction elements next step in the usage of the program it's a summary which is presented basically what i have done in terms of selecting the envelope so you will see okay opac construction elements and going down scrolling down there are all of them and windows and so on and here you can see the values the performance energetic uh, values the, the thermal performance of each of the selected elements if at this point i see that i don't know perhaps i made some kind of uh, mistake and what i have selected it's not good or i would like to change i can very easily deselect a specific element if there are several like they are here you can scroll them and select which one would you like to to uh, cancel or to delete and then you can reselect some other um, construction for this particular part of the envelope and this basically ends up more or less the constructing part of the uh, of the um, of the envelope uh, the next part it is linked to the air tightness and it is linked to the thermal bridges this is even uh, easier because you don't need to uh, lose extensive time here in case of air tightness it's a, a very simple uh, page with uh, a possibility to select different levels of air tightness so you are now in the design stage you don't know where it is going to be but you can propose yourself okay i would like to achieve an air tightness uh, level of let's say 0 0.6 which is more or less the limit from which you can say okay this buildings this building will pro uh, uh, perform in a in a good way i'm selecting it I select the value that I would like to have. There are several values available. One are very, some are very good, some are very poor. It is done, and you uh, uh, go to the next uh, one, which is the thermal bridge. This tool is not calculating the thermal bridges. It will, would be far more complicated and not within the scope 
of this tool, which is to give you an idea about the main points which you need in a design to get to a certain value. So, if you have selected as construction detail here passive house certified construction, this they were done in such a way that they are thermal bridge free. So when reaching here, you will see that this one, it's already marked that yes, and you can go further. If you select it like I selected, independent details, because we do not know a priori what kind of details everybody will do. This is here just to remind you that, okay, you should to the best of your knowledge and effort, provide a building that is thermal bridge free. Therefore, it's just a question of clicking yes, to have it in your mind, but it is not taking into calculation as such. Basically, the tool is not calculating thermal bridges in case you are changing the details. Further, we can we have to play a little bit with the situation. So, <clears throat> if I go uh, back to, to uh, the situation that I have selected, you see here placed two trees, it can be 10, it can be 20, it doesn't matter, which to some extent are generating some kind of shading on this window. Yeah? So, they are generating uh, from these trees, I have some shading on the South facade, which is affecting this part of the of the uh, uh, facade. Now, when going to shading, there are several options which are available. And first of all, if you are in a very in, in, uh, uh, beginning situation, you can say, "Okay, I don't know what is going to be there." Or, maybe you don't have a clear picture and you say, okay, you can choose average shading. And this is generating a shading factor of 0 0.7, which is more or less an average one. And then you can go further with the calculation without going further into details. However, if you feel that you are very well aware of the neighbor and you would like to better simulate the situation as such, then you can choose what I have selected here manually, uh, uh, introducing shading data. And then you will find yourself in the option which allows you to pinpoint the shading on each of the treated facade. You see here, for example, I have 0, 90, 190, and 270. These are the orientation of the facade that I of the walls that I have mentioned in the beginning. If I would have mentioned the facade towards 45 degrees and one towards zero, then I would have had another one on 45. And the tool is asking me on which one do you have some shading. And if you have, please specify it. So you can have shading from uh, from some kind of uh, uh, houses. Here is a shading uh, uh, from trees. So I selected tree because I put there some shading. And the the formula it's an approximate one, so it's not a, a, a hundred percent uh, perfect by decimal, but it allows a simulation of, of uh, a shading and you just have to pinpoint what is the distance from the facade to the place to the, where the shading object it's, uh, it's uh, uh, found and what is the uh, height of this shading object. Then you can see here below a correction factor. This correction factor is basically here to provide with a little bit of uh, flexibility because the tool itself will uh, calculate uh, uh, what would be the, the shading effect. But let's say that my 
in my case, the shading is not affecting 100% of the facade. It is affecting roughly, in my estimation, only 20 or 30 or 40. And then I can correct this and say, okay, this object, I think it will shade only 10% or only 5%. And the final shading coefficient of this facade will be simulated to take this into account. This can work if it's uh, uh, both ways functioning. So you have a shading facade, a factor which is calculated, and this one, it is automatically inputted in the shading. You can do this, as I told you, playing with uh, with the uh, average one, or you can choose to say, okay, I would like to simulate uh, uh, shading for each of the of the facade because I know that on three facade I have no shading, and on the first fourth one I have I don't know some kind of amount of shading, and I would like to be more. All right. Is this clear up to now? Did I speak too? Do I speak too fast? Do you have time to to follow me?